taking a couch into space in Super Mario 3D World. You ever just, you know, sit on a couch and fly out into the great beyond? No? Well, you're in luck then, because today we'll be doing just that. Some of my favorite levels in Super Mario 3D World are the haunted house stages. The atmosphere that is created within these haunted halls is truly amazing. But of course, when wandering through them, there are tons of curiosities scared about. Take World 3-3, Shifty Boo Mansion. I always wanted to know if I could defeat the giant boos that are watching you throughout the level. They are always outside the windows, and they just follow your movement. Or how about the massive graveyard and church-like building that is in the distance? What's up with that? And of course, the flying couches. So in today's video, we're going a bit freeform and addressing a lot of interesting things in this stage. So I hope you enjoy. Let's start with these giant boos in the windows. Honestly, I always wondered what was up with these dudes. Throughout the level, they just stare at you, and at no point can you ever reach them. Now, we do encounter regular boos in this level, but those boos cannot resist chasing you. But these dudes in the windows, they just stare through your soul and don't bother chasing Mario. So what's up with that? So I began some testing. Just for the hell of it, I decided to put Captain Toad in this level just to see if his default lamp affected any of the ghosts here. And it didn't. Throwing Toad to the curb, the next step was to upgrade our light. Placing a light box at the beginning of the level, we can now defeat enemy ghosts with the power of focused light. This is surely Zardy's worst nightmare. But this mansion either has reflective glass, or these ghosts aren't phased by it, since I was shining the light through the window right at them. Now obviously, the game could consider this window as a wall, so I decided to move these ghosts out into the open. They no longer had the safety of the walls to protect them, but I guess they didn't need them either, because the light didn't affect them at all. Not only that, but they couldn't even hurt Mario either. They just slowly followed Mario's movement, and it turns out this is because these big boos are not the same as the other big boos. They are two different object types. Big boos are called Teresa Big in the files, whereas these window watching big boos are called Teresa Conveyor Teresa Big. Redundant in name, but because they look the same, I always assumed that the enemies were one and the same. Kinda need to know now that isn't the case. Moving on, one of the most interesting things to me about the haunted house levels is the background elements. There's this giant graveyard with tons and tons of graves. There's big trees all over the place, and there's a huge building just behind it all. Now there's actually two of these areas and they have different features. The first area's building has no door on it and it's all trees, but the area at the end of the level has everything. I can't help but just sit here and wonder how that creepy background setup fits into the Mario lore, especially in World 3, which is seemingly a world of ice. But as background art, it's a bit hard to get a sense of scale, so I decided to move the background elements forward. I wanted to see how big these graves were compared to Mario. And good grief, they're huge. Just look at that comparison. There's a big issue with moving these assets up here though. They're attached to the ground layer, and the camera only keeps track of the center of this massive object. So if the object's center is out of view of the camera, this whole background scene can unload. This makes it super difficult to measure up the size of these things, as you can see how much trouble I was having when I put the door next to Mario. Taking a closer look at these buildings though, in this case, the building without the door, it's really neat how much depth these add to the level. I of course want to know what they're for, but regardless, I think it's a really cool asset. One of the strange things about this level is the order in which the level takes place. You'd think it'd be sequentially, but when you go through the doors in the level, it's warping you back and forth across the stage. All interior sections are side by side with separate skyboxes, and far to the right all the large outdoor areas can be found. I bring this up because when I started messing with the couch, my plan was to fly over the entire level. The couch actually works very simply. You define points on this path where it should fly, and it uh, just follows the path exactly. It's a bit hard to see given all the regions and zones overlapping the interior of the level, but I knew I wanted to take the couch out into space and fly it over the level. So I started lining out my path. Once done, I went back through the level and hopped on. I thought I deleted the wall in front of the map, but apparently it wasn't cleared, so my ride was cut short as Mario was forced off. I knew there wouldn't be a ceiling in here though, so I tried again, and got pushed off because I wasn't thinking about the angle of the couch. Third time's the charm though, as I made the couch float off the cliff so it could go straight up. And with this, our great couch journey began. I felt like Charlie shooting out of the glass elevator in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The lighting in the level was constantly changing as I was coasting through the sky. I was really hoping I'd have enough time to make it to the end of the level, but then I reached No Man's Land. I was in between skyboxes, and thus there was no real defined background for the level, so the game's frames stopped refreshing and it turned into a smeared mess. 
I had a hard time keeping track of everything, and I accidentally fell off the couch and died. R.I.P. Impasta, Mario. Jumping aboard my couch Voyager 2, I took to the skies again and this time was more careful. Despite the screen smearing, I kept my cool. Once I reached the outdoors area though, the camera snapped to the outer door. I couldn't see what was going on and I did not realize that something happened. I either hit an invisible wall, which the couch passed through and I didn't, or the couch unloaded because it was so far from its origin point. Either way, Mario plummeted from outer space and broke against the barren tundra of the Forgotten Graveyard. Our couch space mission was over. And so was Mario. But uh, yeah, that's three interesting tinkerings in World 3-3. I hope you learned something new in this silly short video, and until my next experiment, cheers.